In this video we are going to look at another theory of bonding. It's a little more uh, sophisticated we might say and it explains additional things that we see in molecules that hybrid orbital theory or Lewis dot structures do not explain. So magnetism is one of those properties that will be explained by molecular orbital theory and then we will also calculate a bond order and so the bond order is a simple calculation we're going to do after we have placed all of the electrons in the molecular orbital diagram so we'll talk about that after we've uh, drawn some diagrams so magnetism is occurs when we have electrons that are pointing in the same direction. So for example, many metals have the d orbitals available to them and the d orbitals occur in groups of five. There are five orbitals within the d subshell and electrons will remain unpaired as long as they are in orbitals that have the same energy. So whenever we have one or more unpaired electrons then we'll have magnetism. So unpaired electrons, the more unpaired the electrons the stronger the attraction will be. But unpaired electrons we're going to refer to as paramagnetic. The species would be paramagnetic. And again that may be just uh, if we had a P, even if we just had one unpaired electron, that would be paramagnetic. If we had four or five unpaired electrons, that would also be paramagnetic. This would just be a stronger uh, attraction. So if the electrons are all paired up, then that magnetic property is canceled. So paired electrons is diamagnetic. So something that's paramagnetic will respond in a magnetic field. So responds in a magnetic field because it's got magnetic properties. Diamagnetic there would be no response to a magnet. So something diamagnetic would act just like a piece of plastic. No response and a magnetic field. So once we've discussed how to build the molecular orbital which will be based on atomic orbitals then we will place electrons in the orbitals from low energy to high energy and then we'll see if our compound is paramagnetic or diamagnetic. And I guess I'm gonna, I'll go ahead and mention bond order here. It's something that we're going to calculate from the diagram. But the bond order is going to be bonding electrons minus antibonding. So we haven't discussed that yet. And divided by two. So bond order I'm gonna call BO and molecular orbital theory I call MO but for bond order if the bond order equals zero then there's no bond and if the bond order equals one that means a single bond so remember a single bond is the longest bond and it's the weakest so that's a long weak bond if the bond order equals two that's a double bond. So we can tell from the Lewis dot structures whether or not our molecule has a double, triple, or single bond, but molecular orbital theory verifies that. That's one of the things that it provides. So a bond order of three would be a triple bond, and that's a short bond and the strongest. So for example, a nitrogen-nitrogen triple bond takes about 940 kilojoules to break. So that's quite a bit. A single bond maybe somewhere anywhere from a couple hundred kilojoules 
I'll just put 400 kilojoules. So it takes a lot more energy to break a triple bond than it does a single bond. So the, once we have built the diagram, we will calculate the bond order. And before we actually get into the building of the diagram, I want to remind us that the electron orbitals came from Schrodinger's wave equations. And those equations give us all kinds of... Uh, so these are solutions to this differential equation for the hydrogen atom. And because electrons behave like waves, we're going to see that waves can interact with each other in a constructive way or a destructive way. So that orbitals, remember, come from these complicated looking equations. So we could have two waves that interact or combine constructively, and that's a good thing. So we might say constructive interference. So if you've had physics, that might make a little more sense, but we don't need that. So if this is a wave, again, this is good, which means low energy. So nature likes to have low energy. So this wave plus another wave exactly in phase, because these are in phase, this would add up, the amplitude would increase. So this is favorable or constructive, good. And this type of interaction between two electrons on two different atoms that are forming a bond gives us a lower energy scenario. And we could also have two waves that exactly cancel each other. So if I have this wave plus a wave that's exactly the mirror image of that, if I add these two waves together, I'm going to basically get zero. So this would be destructive interference. And so when we have, when we combine two atomic orbitals to make two molecular orbitals, one of those orbitals is going to be much lower in energy than the atomic orbital, and one of those new orbitals will be much higher in energy. So destructive interference, this is bad, and bad is high energy because that destabilizes the molecule. So the molecule wants to be at low energy. And we really aren't going to need to do any math here. But the concept of having a good and favorable overlap, we get a bonding molecular orbital. And then the destructive interference, we get anti-bonding. And so that takes away from the energy of that molecule if there are electrons in the anti-bonding molecular orbitals. So to keep track of the electrons in the diagram, once we build it, we're going to label the anti-bonding orbitals with a star or an asterisk. So we actually call that star. And that always represents an excited state. And that means high energy. So if you think if you get really excited about something, oops, X, and you've got a lot of energy, but that's bad for the stabilization, stabilization of a molecule. So I'm going to start with a simple, the simplest molecule, and that's the H2 molecule. I use a different piece of paper. And hydrogen, the element, has two H's in it. So if we look at that. We're going to draw the MO diagram. for H2. And once we get past hydrogen, then we're going to have to 
go back to the idea of sigma bonding and pi bonding. And the way we're going to draw our molecular orbital diagram, that's going to be the combination of atomic orbitals that we get in the middle of the paper. So we're going to pretend that each hydrogen is all by itself and draw its 1s atomic orbital. So we place one hydrogen over here and then directly across from that we place the other atom. And by the way, this theory at this level, we are only going to look at molecules that have two atoms in them. So we're going to be combining two s orbitals, two of them, and you may recall from a previous video that an s orbital will always overlap in the sigma fashion. And what most books do is they show the constructive overlap, or they, they show dotted lines. But when these two waves interfere constructively, I also forgot to draw that we're going to draw our higher energy orbitals going up. So energy increases as we go up the chart. So the constructive interference where we have two waves or two wave equations that interact in a favorable fashion that's going to lower the energy of the molecular orbital. So that molecular orbital will be drawn at a lower energy than these atomic orbitals. And most books show a dotted line, I think, just to help us keep track once we get bigger orbitals in here when we use the 2s and the 2p orbitals. So two atomic orbitals, two aos, are going to generate two mos. So that's very similar to hybrid orbital theory. And the labeling of this, since these are 1s orbitals that overlap in the sigma fashion, we'll call this orbital sigma 1s. And then the higher energy, the destructive interference, that's the bad situation, the higher energy situation. We're going to label that with a star. So we'll call this sigma star 1s. And then since the molecule hydrogen, so the MO diagram itself is the central picture here. So since the molecule hydrogen only has two electrons, we're going to put both of those electrons in this lower energy orbital. And if we looked at this, we could say, well, those electrons are paired up. So that would be diamagnetic. So hydrogen would not respond in a magnetic field. And we could also calculate the bond order. So to calculate the bond order, I'm going to put that right here. That is bonding minus anti-bonding electrons divided by two. So if we look at this picture, we've only got two electrons in the bonding orbitals. So those are not labeled with the star. So two minus, there are zero electrons in the anti-bonding. So two divided by two equals one. And what that means is that the hydrogen hydrogen bond is a single bond. And we already knew that. For one thing, hydrogen can only have a single bond to it, and then there are only two electrons to share in the molecule. On the next video, we are going to see how the p orbitals overlap. So we are going to have pi interaction. And so we'll take a look at that next.